It was August 1st, 1939, and the government officers were lying in wait aboard their small fleet of boats in the choppy waters off the coast of Santa Monica, California. They calculated their next move as they glared at the SS Rex, a floating casino owned by the notorious Tony Cornero. When the officers had attempted to board the ship, Tony's crew let loose high-pressure water hoses. If the officials had tried to use their pistols, then SS Rex could have retaliated with its machine guns. Nearly 600 of the ship's passengers were being held as unwitting prisoners of the now almost forgotten Battle of Santa Monica Bay. Tony Cornero had made a name for himself during the American Prohibition era of the 1920s. He found creative ways to smuggle and move alcohol to his paying customers. But when he dabbled in the gambling business, he spent $200,000 converting a former 300-foot-long steel-hulled clipper into a vessel of gambling, prostitution, and non-stop booze. Tony was born and raised in Italy as the son of a hard-luck corn farmer, and he was no doubt inspired to name his casino SS Rex after the famous Italian ocean liner that was plowing the North Atlantic waters. SS Rex opened on May 5, 1938, and boasted a 250-foot-long bar and 150 slot machines. It was anchored just three miles offshore, just beyond the state territory line, and therefore was not subject to California's laws against gambling. Or so everyone thought. To get to the Rex, you boarded water taxis on the mainland. For 25 cents, you could buy yourself a round-trip journey, and you could stay aboard the ship as long as you wanted, because its 24-hour operation meant it never closed. They advertised fair games and safety aboard the ship. However, stories of trickery and murder were not exactly uncommon aboard the ship. Sometimes, big winners would wash ashore the next morning with a bullet in their head. Los Angeles District Attorney Burren Fitz had his legal team argue that the three-mile limit of the California Territory should be marked from the mouth of the bay and not at the shoreline itself, and thereby making the SS Rex an illegal operation by technicality. He issued public nuisance charges to the casino, and Tony Cornero simply ignored them, continuing to operate the ship as usual. And so that fateful start of August began quite an ordeal as 250 government officials drove out to the ship in an attempt to raid the business. Tony ordered the gangways to be barricaded, and nets were stretched around the vessel to prevent the government agents from getting aboard. Tony shouted over the side of the ship, Nobody's coming aboard this ship. We're on the high seas, and we're prepared to defend our rights. Try to use force, and we'll use it too. Agents began climbing the nets to get to the upper decks, and that's when the crew of the ship brought out fire hoses and sprayed the officers, knocking them into the water. The officials knew that Tony's ship was equipped with at least two machine guns, so to prevent a gunfight from breaking out, they waited patiently for an opportunity to seize the ship. Tony was confident that he could sustain the standoff, and although he was holding his 600 passengers hostage, the ship was loaded with plenty of food and drinks. However, there was no escape. The ship had no engines. It was essentially a floating barge, and without tugboat assistance, there was nowhere to flee. As the first night wore on, the officials were able to convince Cornero that his passengers might panic, so he reluctantly allowed his customers to be evacuated off the ship, while he and his crew stayed behind to continue the standoff. For ten days they held out, the government boats circling the wrecks all the while. Finally, Tony and his crew gave themselves over to the authorities, stating, I have to get a haircut, and the only thing I haven't got aboard is a barber. After a failed court battle, it was determined that the SS Rex could not continue operation, and soon after, the officers guarding the ship as evidence confiscated the gambling paraphernalia and tossed overboard anything that they couldn't bring back to the mainland. The ship was then disposed of. The LA Times concluded, The day of the gaming ships is done. Cornero would eventually move his gambling trade to Las Vegas, and he conceived of the famous Stardust Casino, though he would never live to see it completed. It was a casino that made itself available to a larger demographic outside the wealthy class, and therefore reinvented Las Vegas, setting the town on a path to the fame and visitation it receives today. But it all started from a famous standoff aboard the ill-fated SS Rex. 
Thank you for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting my channel by either signing up for my Patreon or to my YouTube memberships. That way you can get exclusive perks in return. Links are in the description below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.